Hi, we're going to talk about one of my most favorite things, stoichiometry. In this video, we're just going to go very, very basic. And then I have a couple other videos to show you different types of stoichiometric equations. Stoichiometry, what is it? Huge word. It means the study of quantitative relationships between reactants and products. Um, quantitative, key word there. We're looking at amounts. And here is the beauty of stoichiometry. You can have information about just one compound, one item. And from that one piece of information, you can find the amounts, quantitative, you can find the amounts of everything else. The heart of stoichiometry is what are called molar ratios. Molar ratios are the relationships between all of the compounds based on the molar coefficients. So these numbers, the large numbers you'll recall are molar coefficients. Now, before we look at these molar coefficients and the molar ratios, I want to give you an example with s'mores. Let's say that I want to make a s'more. It's going to take two graham crackers, one marshmallow, and three chocolates, uh, three pieces of chocolate. And if I'm making you hungry, I'm sorry. Um, so there's one s'more. Well, let's say you and I are going to go and make s'mores. So you know that we need two marshmallows, six um, pieces of chocolate, and four graham crackers because it's a ratio. One s'more, okay? So one s'more, that comes from the three pieces of chocolate, the one marshmallow, and the two graham crackers. Oh my goodness, that kind of looks like a chemical equation. Well, it's the same thing. These molar coefficients show us the ratios that we need for a chemical reaction, just like these are ratios to make a s'more. So let's look at our equation right here. One mole of this iron oxide, so let's rest the iron three oxide, reacts with one mole of carbon monoxide to produce two moles of iron and three moles of carbon dioxide. Now we can write these ratios, watch this. I could say one mole of the iron three oxide will react with one mole of carbon monoxide. Now, the reciprocal of this is also a true statement. If I have one mole of carbon monoxide, it will react with one mole of iron three oxide. So the reciprocals are also true. The key to this is going to be watching your units, watching your units. Let's do from reactants to products. And I could, um, there's several combinations. I can pick any of these because those ratios are always going to be constant. Let's take the um, carbon monoxide to the iron. One mole of carbon monoxide will produce two moles of iron. And then the reciprocal but true statement, if I produce two moles of iron, then it came from one mole of Cl, of carbon monoxide. Now you can also compare on the product side. If I have two moles of iron, it means that we also produced three moles of carbon dioxide. I could also reciprocate that. If I have three moles of carbon dioxide, it's going to produce, or also have two moles of iron that have been produced. So your molar ratios, they allow us to connect one compound to another one. Again, molar ratio, this is the heart of stoichiometry. It allows us to take information about one compound and find out information about a second compound. I've nicknamed this the bridge. Again, if I have information about the carbon, or excuse me, the iron three oxide, I can walk a bridge using the molar ratio. It would be this one right here. I can walk this bridge and find the information of the CO. So there's the heart of stoichiometry. Thanks.